Good morning all, Alpha Star DX here. Since I have not been able to, nor will I be able to, string a game show episode together for a little while yet, I decided this would be a good time to put together a video detailing the games that we've kept and the rules for each. This way, I don't have to go over them every single time we play them. It'd be easier that way. YouTube link will be up later on for those of you who are not watching live. In the spirit of the normal show, let's begin with Wheel of Fortune. I need to... Yeah, just a little something with the volume. There we go. By the way, if you do know how to play these games, fantastic. If you don't, then this is for your benefit. Okay, so for my purposes, there will be three contestants, two by the computer. Whoops, there we go. All right. We play with no timer, which is instrumental for this kind of show. Now, regardless of the order that the contestants are listed in here, uh, whoever goes first will actually wind up being randomized. So where I've been doing trivia questions to determine that, that's kind of moot here. So we're just going to play the game. Category is person. There's how the puzzle is constructed in words. Uh, at any given time, you can spin the wheel, buy a vowel, or solve puzzles. Uh, you spin the wheel, you get whatever you land on for each consonant you find, or you can buy a vowel for $250. Or if you know the puzzle, solve it, and whatever is in your bank, you keep for the rest of the game. So we spend 550. I call an R and get three of them, so that's 550 a pop. That'll math out to $1,650. I'll buy a vowel. Two of them. Now, regardless of how many come up, it's $250 flat. Unfortunately, you still lose that money even if that vowel does not appear in the puzzle. And be careful not to be careful not to call any used letters. It'll cost you your turn. Um, buy an O. Okay. I need to look that up because if we're going by the rank, sergeant is spelt incorrectly. Oh, no, we're not. That is his name. Robert Sergeant Shriver, an American diplomat from the... But it looks like his main run of stuff was during the Kennedy administration. But in any event, if you solve the puzzle, your money goes into your bank. And whatever money you had if you did not solve the puzzle goes down the drain. 
So that 2400 that I had disappeared because I didn't know this guy's name. So now there's a prize on the wheel, the piano. Hit bankrupt, you lose all your money for this round and your turn. doing all right so far he's gonna be hard to catch up to if he's let solve this thing not have come up with that one either. Now there's a $5,000 space on the wheel and the piano's still out there. Anything we don't see spawn I'll explain at the end of this. I should probably also mention there are three main rounds. Whoever's got the most in their bank at the end of those three rounds goes on to the bonus. to catch some major lightning here. Uh, right, here goes. Alright, so I've now picked up the piano. It stays in my bank along with the $750 that was underneath that space. Damn it. There goes the piano. Oh, come on. Oh, so much for landing on that. The piano's gone entirely now. Oh, damn it. And I know who this person is, too. That kind of relates to being a major game show connoisseur. I'll explain that in a couple minutes. <sighs> I gotta make some money or I can't win. And there's one letter that I need to save for a perfect spin. 2500 would be fine. Good, got it, okay. So I watch, so Match Game is one of the game shows that I really, 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 really watch. Jack Klugman was the husband of one of my favorite panelists from that show, Brett Summers. And look at that. A nice 2500 landing allows me into the bonus round. So you get, so even if you don't win whatever money you've banked into by solving, you get that added to your lifetime record. So this for me would be just the beginning. I'm not adding this to my personal record, by the way. This is absolutely unrelated to 
the actual show. Um, what didn't we hit? There's a lose a turn space out there, which doesn't take away your money, but turn does pass to the next player. Um, free spin. If you get a consonant up on the board, you'll earn a free spin. So should you miss a solve, um, call a letter that's not there, um, hit bankrupt or lose a turn, you can use that and your turn would resume. And is there anything else that I missed here? I don't think so. Okay, so that's the first three rounds. Here's round four, the bonus. Five cards, each with a prize inside. Pick one of those. I'm going to go with the H. R-S-T-L-N-E will be put into the puzzle for you. It didn't used to be like that. I'll explain this at the end of the at the end of the round. I know this. And I'll have it solved down to one letter once I do this. So I'll add to the tension and give you guys time to figure it out. I'll just explain it now. So back in the old days, the bonus round was generally pretty small, and you could pick five consonants and one vowel of your own. Um, you had 15 seconds to solve the puzzle at the end of that. Later, they made the determination that maybe, I guess that was a little too hard, but they changed it so that RST, LNE go into the puzzle automatically. Then you can select three more consonants and one more vowel on top of that. And you only had 10 seconds to solve the bonus puzzle at that point presumably to compensate for the extra help in letter selection. Uh, there are a lot of variants that the show has been through since then. I'm not going to cover all of that. Feel free to do your own research. Have you figured out the puzzle yet? If not, too bad. M, C, D, A. Yeah, I'm kind of toying with you at this point. Sometimes you'll get lucky and fill in the entire puzzle right then and there. This time, couldn't be done. In this game, you've got 20 seconds to solve the puzzle, and because this is single player in nature, that cannot be shut off. Miss the puzzle, you get nothing else. Win the puzzle, and you get the prize concealed. So that's a sports car worth $23,500, bringing my total winnings for today up to $28,950. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is Wheel of Fortune. So that game is our usual starter game, just to kind of warm everybody up. Um, next after that, let's do 3K Trivia. What you're seeing right now are the categories that are in this game. If you've ever seen The Joker's Wild, this is pretty much that. And if not, stay tuned. So, how we usually play this is with 10 questions. No time limit, of course. Display answers, absolutely. Uh, we're not going to change any options. And here's how it's done. Up to six people can play this one. Okay, so inherently, each question is worth 100 points. 
and at the end of the game points translate to dollars for lifetime record um, yeah uh, win or lose it was decided that you do get to keep whatever whatever money you've earned regardless uh, okay so I'll explain the different setups as we go along here pick one two or three depending on the category you like a single on this board is worth a hundred points uh, what wars took place between 499 and 479 BC now this is a trivia game with one extra bit of help you can highlight one of these letters and have it filled in but if you do it'll cost you half the value of the question like so but on the upside if it helps you you'll get some points I believe having seen that it's the Persian Wars so that nets me fifty dollars uh, same deal again what is the most common seedless plant um, don't know this either is it a fern a natural triple that is worth one thousand dollars and what country is the Atacama Desert uh, I'm getting an awful lot of questions that I just don't know is it in China Chile miss the question you don't get the points uh, if you find a double it's worth two hundred dollars Sally Rogers on Dick Van Dyke don't know this Rosemary okay uh, the bonus card is basically your jokers they can be applied to anything you pick so with this you can play either true trivia or history geography for two hundred dollars My brother might know this. He's good at this kind of thing. I wouldn't have gotten that with or without help. As you can see, this has not been one of my uh, better sets. And showbiz is definitely not one of my better categories. Um, Charles Bronson. I want to say that's Rita Hayward. Jill Ireland? Okay. There are two more scenarios out there. One of them we're fairly likely to hit. Another one we are simply not. Insects have six legs. Science and nature is generally my best category. That's where I would be geared to. A cartographer? Oh, damn. I should know this. Um, maps, maps.
What is the nearest star? The sun. All right, there are two scenarios. It looks like we're not going to run into this game. We have seen the single, the double, or the double of both varieties, which is worth the same thing, wild or natural. And we've seen the natural triple. Um, a wild triple, basically one or two categories with two or one wilds to round it out, <clears throat> is worth $500. If you are lucky enough to catch three jokers, that can be a question in any category on this set, and it's worth $2,000. Huge leg up if you can capture that. The salutation on World War II draft notices. I want to say greetings. All right. There's really no bonus aside from personal glory if you win this one, but it's a nice, easy little trivia game. Uh, next up, ah, all right, Solar's favorite, Card Sharks. Just me. I don't know. Am I a champion? Nope. But Leisha is. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to use one of the generic characters. Or not generic, but pre-existing champion. Just for the sake of whatever. So here's the deal. The red player, generally the champion, will be asked the first question. And it's going to be something like this. We asked 100 people of some kind, generally. Uh, they're focusing on pediatricians this time. Are girls easier to toilet train than boys? How many said they think girls are easier to train? Your job is to estimate, as best you can, how many out of those 100 uh, think girls are easier to train for this question. This is a general rule going forward Girls are easier to train uh, Given certain functions of anatomy, I'm actually going to go a little high on this and say 65 The second player's job is to decide higher or lower the Actual number of pediatricians who said girls are easier is 91 not lower but higher so if you call high low and are correct you win the question if you do not the person who gave the initial number wins the question and winning the question means this so you see each player has five cards lined up on the board you're each shown your first card and whoever has control of the question by winning the toss or the board by winning the toss up has the right to change a card that they don't like. And you're playing high-low with deuces low, aces high. So you generally want to stay out of the middle if you possibly can, and nine is pretty close, so we will say change the card. Oh, real effective change. Sometimes it don't work out for you. Uh, nine is on the high side of the middle, I'm gonna say lower. Five, fairly low, gonna say higher. Seven, pretty close to the middle. After the first card, you always have the option to freeze where you are. If you miss a call at any time, you lose all the cards dating back to the, to the slide marker you saw at the beginning, the one that is about to move right now. That marker there. When you freeze, you go no f that means a few things. One, you go no further on this play of the cards. And two, if you make a mistake anywhere along the line now, 
you don't go any further back than where that marker is. So that having been done, we move on and the second player now gets a turn to provide a number. So 100 people in Cory, Pennsylvania. Do you go to bed before 10 o'clock most nights? And now it's player one's turn to decide lower or higher. Oh. Corey, Pennsylvania. What even is there? Uh, I'm going to say higher. Though probably not by much. 13. Nasty break for Sue. By the way, that king Sue's got is a very high card, and she'd be well served to keep it if she gets a shot at this board. I am going to change the 7. Also, another downside to missing a card while you're playing. Your opponent then gets a turn at their cards, but they do not have the right to change the card because they would not have won the question. We went a teeny bit lower. Let's go higher. Ah. So she cannot change the king, not that she would want to anyway. And if you get a pair here, you're kind of shafted. All right. A hundred wives of Marines. Do you ever pretend to be just a little bit helpless to make your husband feel like a he-man? Uh... I mean, in my eyes, that's a pretty terrible thing to do, but it was a different world back then, and there are people even today with different points of view than that. Going with that point of view, I'm going to say 73. Oh, seems I misjudged it. Well, now she can change the king if she wants. Of course, she's not gonna. Played a ballsy with the nine. Ultimately does not pay off. She almost had me, though. Going higher. Ah, yeah. Okay, now the rules change a little bit. The fourth question in any round is the sudden death question. And after this question, I will explain what that means. A hundred male high school seniors. Have you ever had a crush on any of your teachers? Oh, yeah. Uh, um, well, I suppose then it becomes a question of admitting it. I'm still going to say higher. The answer is higher no matter what situation you look at. But do they admit it? Mm, not many of them did, but just enough. So, here's what happens now. First of all, if you win the question, you can choose whether or not you keep control of the board. If you do, you may change your base card and play on, but if you screw up, your opponent wins on the spot. If you pass, your opponent may not change their card, and if they screw up, you win on the spot. <clears throat> so... I'm not in the most enviable position here. She's got a strong starting card, but she does have to make the full line of four in one go. As for me, I've only got two. And there's definitely some room for things to go wrong. I personally prefer to keep control of my own destiny, so I'm going to keep the board. I'm not going to change the six. Let's go higher. Excellent card. Lower. Got it. We play best two out of three rounds. Whoever wins two goes on to the money cards. 
Also, you get $100 for winning each game. So I've got, I would have added 100 to my lifetime total no matter what happens here. All right, and procession continues as normal. If the second player got the last number selection, the first player starts off this one. 100 single women. Do you think the sexual revolution has improved your love life? Well, gee, what the fuck do you think? 78. So that X marks that you've won a game so far. I call bullshit on that. <laughs> Mm, another pair stoppage. Too bad. Not that I would want to change the lowest card in the deck. Freeze. Unless I'm really in a shaft, I try not to play sevens, eights, or nines. Eights being dead in the middle. 100 married men. Do you think it is wrong for young couples to live together before getting married? And here's that culture shock thing in action. Having been released in 1988, this is a world where this kind of thing is generally not looked well upon. I would definitely expect that to be a higher number. She's coming real close, and I've gotten lucky every time on it. Yeah, off the seven. Excellent. Lower. Oh, what the... F really? <laughs> oh my god. Twice. <laughs> oh no. I can tell you... I can tell you one of my one of my players solar flare would be having a fit as a matter of fact this very thing happened to her once except with with a two instead of with an ace and she completely lost her shit and it was funny Ugh. moving on a hundred window washers in New York be honest, right now, are the windows in your home dirty? I mean, there's something to be said here about keeping organized while you're at work, but not so much while you're at home. But I'm going to stick it fairly close to the middle, though, 43. Hmm... Oh, again. Oh, Solar would be losing it here. Lower. Freeze again. Sudden death. In a very similar situation to last time. A hundred married men again. Would you be disturbed if you noticed your wife had stopped wearing her wedding ring? I mean, in general context, that ring is pretty symbolic. And symbolism was a big thing then. Higher. Mm hmm A lot hinges on a good change here. Let's roll. Change the seven. And higher. Oh, no. Oh. That means Sue wins on the spot, and now we are down to one more game. All right. I think I detailed the money cards pretty well over the course of, um, over the, course of the series. So if I don't get to it here, I'm not going to play it again for the sake of doing it again.
All right. 100 female corporate vice presidents. In your experience, does a man make a more ruthless competitor than a woman? Now let's bear something in mind here. Back then, women had to seriously fight to get any kind of standing anywhere in the workplace. So that being said, I would have to give it to a very developed streak of got to do what I got to do. So I'm going to take this one low, 28. Hmm. Well, it was less than half at least. A lot of extremely improbable things happening tonight. Well, that not so much, but but come on, ace after ace, deuce after deuce, three after or deuce after three. A hundred people in Rarotonga, New Zealand. Are you more likely to buy a piece of fruit than pick it off a tree? That part of the world, I don't see that being at all likely. Are you fucking kidding me? The same? We are hitting every improbable case tonight, you guys. If you nail the number dead on, then obviously you win. Now, we have not yet seen that particular case on the extravaganza, so I will declare this right now. If you land a number exactly on the money, that is worth a $500 bonus. It is not related to the context of the game, obviously, because the game doesn't record it. But that 500 will go into your lifetime total. Uh, let's go higher. Freeze. Can't afford to play that game. <clears throat> 100 recent immigrants from the Soviet Union. As far as you know... While you were living in the, in the Soviet Union, was your house or apartment bugged? I could see that being a driving reason to get out. 67. Yee, I guess not. Yeah, she's been playing awfully liberally. Hasn't frozen on anything but a, but the eight. All right, sudden death. We each have a game. This is for the match. 100 people, just everyday, normal people. Does a magazine have the right to publish an article telling its readers how to build an atomic bomb? I mean, sure, print whatever you like, but... I don't agree with this. Pick, I mean, print whatever you want. If somebody's going to be stupid enough to actually try and build the thing, that's where the problem lies. It's nothing to do with the print. And society doesn't agree, so here we go. She's also going to play out her own destiny. Oh, not good. That's a win. We're not going to see the money cards here. But again, I've explained it pretty well detailed over the series. So I'm not going to play this again just to do that. That's card sharks. Next up, classic concentration this one was a late 80s CBS staple card sharks has been all over the grid
One player. Am I a champ? Nope. Well, let's go with this. Oh, shit. You know what? Hold on. I really hope I didn't just eliminate the two lesbians character. I was not thinking about that one. Okay, we're good. We're good. Whew. Good save. Okay, so here's the deal. This is a two-fold puzzle game. On top, you see these number tiles which is a is basically a memory card game. Uh, each one you flip over will be prizes with two wild cards hidden somewhere in there. Match a prize, win that prize, get a guess at the puzzle underneath. Now what's underneath is a rebus puzzle and what that is is a collection of pictures that are added together to form some kind of common phrase or person or place or what have you. You'll see as we go along. A uh, player on the left always goes first, so this one actually is decided by a trivia question before we begin the game. A desk and a vacuum. A camera and a toaster. A telescope and a vacuum. She obviously did not remember where the vacuum was. Solve the puzzle, you win all the prizes on your side of the board, and you move on to the bonus round to play for a car. Um, not yet. Recliner. Camera. We've seen the camera. There it is. Recliner, recliner. Uh, there's a W. Is that an all? In. We are all in. Is that an ear? I'm not sure enough yet. There's the desk. Gave us no help at all. I need more of I need the bottom half, or at least part of it. Telescope. Oh no. Whew. Close break. Bicycle. Mexico trip. That was real intelligent. Microwave. There's one of the two wild cards. Flip over a wild card, you will automatically get the other nat get the natural match of what you picked flipped over. If you pick both wild cards in a single shot, then you get to pick one more tile, you'll win that prize, the natural match will flip over, and you will get a bonus $500. I'm going to take a stab at this. We are all in this together. All right. So what do we have here? We have W plus ear. We are we ear we ear. That is an all. And the sign reading in, we are all in the word this, 
and then a tugboat. So tug plus eth plus or, tug, eth, or, together. We are all in this together. And certainly we are. So the bonus round looks like this. <clears throat> and I should tell you, what I'm about to do is not an accurate simulation of how it actually goes in this series or even on the show because you're kind of dependent on how quickly the contestant can call the numbers and how quickly the text can flip open those panels. They have made allowances for text slip ups in the past. But usually, like I literally just try and do my best to keep up with the calls as fast as I can. And I've had a lot of practice with it, but even then I'm human. Sometimes it happens. So here's the bonus round. Up there are the names of eight cars. Seven of them are matched up. One of them is all by itself intended to fool you. At base, you have 35 seconds to, excuse me. <clears throat> At base, you have 35 seconds to come up with all seven matches. Whichever is the last one is the car you'll win. And I went for the Seville, which is the most expensive of these cars. Um, if you miss, you don't win a car, and the base time will go up, or the time will go up by five seconds every time until somebody finally wins a car. That's why it started at 40 seconds instead of the 35 of normal. So there's the prize total for the day. The Seville, again, the most expensive car. $24,000 for a car. Nowadays is pretty normal. Back then was a lot of money. Back then, cars were maybe eight, nine thousand dollars, like like normal models. That Seville's a luxury. So yeah, this day would have been worth twenty-seven thousand one hundred forty-nine dollars. This person has an in-game lifetime total of forty-five thousand nine hundred forty-seven dollars, and that is classic concentration. Um, well, let me make adjustment here. Yeah, yeah, okay. I need to do some quick math here. Hang on just a moment. Let's do Hollywood Squares next. And for this one, we're going to need the NES. some quick logistical stuff that's bugging me real quick. <clears throat> okay, there we go. That's better. 
and here we go. We switch over to the NES for this one because the DOS version is not nearly as well working. I love the music behind this one, really. Uh, one contestant. And I'm not going to save state because no, primarily if I do, I risk overriding the state of somebody being champion. Not something I'm willing to do. Actually, this has only been played once, hasn't it? Yeah, I think this was only played one night. And Laisha won the car to finish it, so I don't think it matters that much. Uh, screw it. Doesn't matter. <clears throat> so basically, Hollywood Squares is tic-tac-toe, but with the following twist. <clears throat> the celebrity will be asked a question. True or false? According to the World Book Encyclopedia, it is estimated that termites cause as much property damage each year in the U.S. as fire does. So the celebrity will first offer a quick little joke and then an answer. Your job is to decide whether the, the celebrity is giving the right answer or just blowing smoke. Do so correctly, you get the square, miss, and your opponent gets the square instead. Hmm. <laughs> the household dog, huh? I'll give it, I'll say yeah. No, really? So termites are as destructive as fire, huh? Also, I will pause the emulation so that the 10 seconds don't run down in a normal game. True or false, most male gorillas are only interested in getting romantically involved about once a year. And I bet he does. Now, some of these answers are based on actual answers from the 1980s version of the show, the John Davidson version. Pretty fascinating. Somebody actually went to the trouble of recording these and then translating them into a game. For the block. Lizzie Borden took an axe and gave her mother 40 wax. When she saw what she had done, she gave her father... I'm not going to say it. <laughs> now the poem goes 41. She's setting herself up for a double win here. Greetings, welcome, farewell, and... <laughs> I don't think so. Yeah. Alright. So now I'm pretty badly baked. I can hope that she'll do the stupid and go for the block instead of the win here. Because the Japanese people use 20 billion of them a year, they now have to import them from Hibbing, Minnesota. What are they? They've got to be disposable chopsticks. Hmm. <laughs> Yeah. That's the only thing that makes sense. Now, if she gets this, she gets the win. Can you get lead poisoning from being pricked with a pencil? Considering it's graphite, no. Oh, that wouldn't be poison. That'll just drill right through you. Yep. So Mary captures the win there. That's worth $500 to her lifetime. Procession continues. Since it was her turn last, it's my turn now. Second round, there's a secret square, which in this game, it's always some kind of trip. But for the sake of 
pardon me, but for the sake of having a reasonable bonus in this game, it's going to be worth $5,000 to your record. Not related to the game, of course. True or false? Happily married women have stronger immune systems than those with sour marriages. I mean, I can see that being a stress thing, sure. <laughs> Much better start than last time. In Japan? I'd say bowing. Oh no. No, no, no. No, definitely don't be doing the hugging. <clears throat> I could take away an avenue of winning and set up one of my own with this. I haven't reached it in my studies yet, but I would say God. I might even fall for baptism as an answer. All right, baptism. Let's be fair, God can certainly do it. Who first coined the phrase, the silent majority? I do not know, and thankfully, I really don't have to know. Oh, ha! Now, if somebody's going for a block and they miss the question, that win is not handed by default. Player must win it themselves. Marcel Marceau. That's funny. You've been invited to someone's home for dinner at 8 o'clock. According to Miss Manners, you should never arrive after when. Um, I mean, me personally? 8 o'clock. I'm sure there's such a thing as fashionably late to some lazy, unmotivated people. 8.15-ish, maybe? That seems way too late. 8.12. That's an interesting time. Secret Square was never found and tried for. But we've seen that situation on the show, so that's okay. 500 apiece. This game decides it. Some doctors are now using zippers instead of stitches on surgery patients. Although I cannot see that being the greatest solution, and I certainly don't hear very much of them being used today. Back then, sure, it was maybe a trial concept. Uh, well, if she's not going to take it, I will. According to Roman mythology, who was the messenger of the gods? Roman mythology? That would be Mercury. FedEx. Problems with floaters. Eye doctor, foot doctor, psychiatrist. I mean, the, my natural first thought would be a plumber. <laughs> and so are theirs, apparently. <clears throat> no, I think that's an eye problem. Yep. Alright, I need to stop her in her tracks. Smoking can have an effect on a man's any system. Hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, that stuff will kill sperm. All right, Mary, go ahead. Tack the head onto the penis. Uh, I... 
I I mean there are two things to be said here on either side of the coin. One is routine and the other is should is she in the physical state to be doing this? I mean, I don't know if I'd be able to get in the way of my mother in this situation. Hmm. <laughs> yeah. And it even affirms about routine. All right, now's my chance. Special heat producing light. Hydrogen peroxide. That's a that's a cleansing implement. Either cleaning, well, no, it's got to be cleaning. Hmm. Heat producing light. I'll, I'll buy it. Bonding. Ah, fuck, I fell for it. I reasoned my way to cleaning, bleaching, yada, 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 and I fell for it anyway. A study among Eskimos in Greenland who eat a lot of fish showed a considerably lower inci incidence in what? Um, I really don't know. Hmm. I'll buy that. Yeah. Okay, I've got a problem here. If this goes to a tie, I'm not going to win. So she's going to have to screw up at least once. Well, Decepticons are a uh, subcategory of Transformers. Madballs. Oh, they're all toys. Oh, that's funny. Phyllis Diller. No, they're toys. Although it can absolutely be argued that the computer is a toy. I use mine as such, primarily. Minimum number of hours sleep you should get for good health. Everyone and everything says eight. I function on less pretty well. <laughs> At least seven. Oh, she got me. She got me on the double win. Ah, oh, damn. So here's how the bonus round works. You get a selection of five keys. Pick one. Each of those keys goes to one of the five cars. Okay, so here's the deal. Five keys, five cars. Each key starts a car. You hold on to the key for as long as you are champion, and if you continue winning, your odds will be better and better because you will know that that key doesn't work on so many cars. So you win your first day and you don't win the car. You still have key number two, but now there's a one in four chance instead of one in five that you win the car because you're obviously going to try a different one. Um, go the third day, it's one out of three, and so on down the line. If you win five straight days, obviously, you're winning the last car. Now, as soon as you win the car, you win the value of that car for your lifetime winnings, and your championship reign ends. So you'd have to start all over again from one out of five. And that is Hollywood Squares. Um, there's another DOS game we do up to now called Schoolhouse. I'm actually going to do that one in its own separate video because there are a lot of different rule sets there that need to be covered. So I'm going to wait on that and finish off this video that we're doing now with press your luck who are the 
who are the current champions here? Okay, so Wit and Kuro together are currently champions of Wheel of Fortune and of Pressure Luck. Leish is the current Card Sharks champ. Wit is the current 3K champ. Kuro and Wit together have a lot of championships. My goodness. Uh, Leisha is no longer Hollywood Squares champ because she won the car. Schoolhouse doesn't really have champions. And I need to make note of these files here. That way I have reference for this. All right, cool. There we go. All right. So here's what I'm going to do. Set these guys to computers. All right. So press your luck. An early to mid 80s CBS staple where the show had it as a four question trivia round and then a small money bonus round and then another four questions and then a much bigger money bonus round. You can do a live question round in this, but it's really inconclusive. Um, when I piloted this, I did a, I did a very different way of trivia. Uh, for the first round, I had a 10 question trivia set in which each question was worth one spin. Second round trivia was worth two spins apiece. On the show, you buzz in with an answer, and then the other two contestants get to answer with multiple choice questions or with multiple choices to go with it. Two choices on top of the answer given. Get it right on a multiple choice, get one spin, get it right on a buzz in, it's worth three spins. Is how the show worked. Alternatively, you can play a whammy round in the style of whammy, the all new press your luck. So you'd go, everybody would go around with one spin, get some money, and whammies would increase on that board every time. Hit a whammy, you lose all your money, you're out for the rest of the round. Or you can freeze at any time, your money will be safe, but you cannot advance further, and if anybody's left, they can sail right past you. Or <clears throat> there's a spin round. The board will have numbers of spins on it. You get four runs at it to match the four trivia questions on the show. Uh, 
kind of like the slide fade effect, so we're going to do that. Um, yeah, we'll play with... This will be good. I think we'll play with each board at least once as we go. All right, cool. I'm going to use the pilot game file for this. Uh, yeah, sure. Alternatively, you can put up equal spins, random spins, assign your own spins, skip over the question route entirely. All right. Both rounds. We won't use an intro. Oh, that's not good. Oh, hold on. Looks like there's something I need to fix here. PR1. Cannot find blue exercise equipment. That's kind of strange. I'm doing some troubleshooting here. It's telling me where the prize referenced is. But for some odd reason, cannot find it. I don't know what they're talking about. It's here. All right. Let's try something for argument's sake. Because I'm really kind of curious about something here. I wonder if the length of this All right. Yeah, I'm wondering if the length of that prize name goes beyond some limit. Let's try that.
Doesn't seem to want to load that board. change that reference to Maybe it just didn't like that I had that open. Well, I'll address that later. And again, I should mention this is pretty much dependent on my ability to hit to hit the space bar at the right time It's possible on this board to get a to get a money bonus too. Three spins. And there's a mystery prize down there too. So this style of play goes around four times. Oi. This first round may take a while. Niagara Falls thirteen ninety nine. That's a big bonus. Ah, uh, too bad. But you got three on your first run, though. Trying to 
turn those spins into dollars. We have 13,000 of those dollars up there in the board, and we have some surprises and a few whammies to keep you honest, so beware of the whammy. What's your pleasure? All right, the bonuses are intact there. Let's go. Stop. Stop for the thousand. <laughs> so, you have as many spins as you earn in whichever type of round you're playing. possible to earn an extra three spins what do you want to do? Stop. Stop at Stretch or pass. if you pass at any time it goes to your opponent with the next highest amount of money Keep it going. Stop it up $150. What's your pleasure? Keep it going. Now I'm going to pass, and pass spins must be taken first. But it's not his turn. If the game suddenly crashes, it's because at this moment I'm having to spend. I'm trying to fix the issue we were just having with um, the one prize here. The blue exercise equipment prize was... For some reason, crashing out my game and not allowing me to use the pilot board. Oh, damn it. That's a big hit. Not good. Well, if you do hit a whammy, you lose all your money, but any pass spins you have become earned, so you can do whatever you gotta. Oh well. We'll have to fight another day here. Stop at an answering machine. Stop. Stop at a thousand dollars. Also, I'm pretty sure the computers are programmed with the knowledge of certain historical patterns, shall we say? I will not elaborate.
elaborate any further on that. Lest I deter any potential players from doing their own research. <laughs> yeah, that's definitely pre-programmed pattern knowledge. That sound was definitely edited. I need to work out a way to disable that sound. Not because I don't like it, but... Because, I mean, I'm here to present it. Mystery prize. Is that Niagara Falls again? Because that was one of the two prizes I was uh, tweaking here. Oh, too bad. Yeah, getting out with second place was going to be almost impossible. That was about as close as I could have gotten. Doesn't look like the game's going to crash. Well, we'll play with the whammy board this time around. This will be the first round um, thing, though, when we actually do this. May as well stick with that board. So one round through, and then whammies will increase. Here we go. Yeah, we can see some big prizes out here. There's a $20,000 prize on this board. I gotta go on. Uh, split second too late. Did that whammy just overtake the $20,000 space? No, thankfully. Or 
20k. Uh, it's not going to be 20k. That would effectively mean out of the game, and we don't want that. So yeah, I'm going to flip the order when we actually put this in motion. That Curacao trip really put her over the top. Here's where it gets interesting. He's actually pretty close. What do you want to do? Most of the time. Too bad. Alright, I think I fixed the problem here with the pilot board. Let's try it. By the way, that's pretty much pressure luck. Alright, I think at this point I need to just eliminate that board. Which is really too bad. And for the most part, that's the run of game shows that we are doing on the extravaganza. You want to join, feel free to find a way to contact me. And I'll see what I can do for you. This has been Alpha Star DX. Have an alpha day.